Hey all side fans, today we're going to be testing the ray tracing performance of the AMD RX 7900 XTX to see if an AMD card is finally a contender, or if they're going to be stuck on the bench watching while others play with ray tracing. The card we'll be testing with today is the beautiful Power Color Red Devil RX 7900 XTX. We'll be taking this card through our 5 game ultra wide gauntlet to see if it can deliver the goods, and if it can't, we'll turn on FSR quality to see if it can bring home the bacon. All games will be tested at our four ultra-wide and super ultra-wide resolutions. Everything will be tested on my test bench featuring an AMD R7 5800X 3D CPU with 32GB of 3200Hz CL14 memory, running Windows 11 and using the latest AMD drivers. Starting off our ray tracing gauntlet, we have Forza Horizon 5 played at its extreme preset with extreme ray tracing. Here we see our 7900XTX starting out strong at our 1440p ultra-wide resolution with a 91 FPS average, only 7% slower than the raster performance. Although FSR quality is seeing negative scaling due to the overhead, because this game does not scale well with resolution on this card. FSR quality comes in at 84 FPS for a 7% slide from the raw ray tracing numbers. 1% low stay tight at 74 and 68 FPS for RT and FSR. Moving up to 1600p ultra we see 86 FPS, only 7% slower than the raster performance and better than the FSR, which is still seeing negative scaling at only 80 FPS, 8% slower than the raw RT performance. Again, our 1% lows are staying tight with 71 and 66 FPS for RT and FSR. With our 1440p Super Altwide, we see 73 FPS for the RT average, a 50% dip from the average here. We see RT struggling a bit more at this aspect ratio. Our Super Altwide is high enough resolution that we see FSR back in positive results with a 1 FPS advantage over just RT performance. When looking at the 1% lows, we see a tight 62 FPS for both RT and FSR. At 4K Ultra, we are still getting smooth performance at 72 FPS for a 10% dip from its raster performance, and FSR again with positive results at 74 FPS, a 3% uplift for the RT performance, with some very tight 1% lows at 63 for both RT and FSR. Once again, Forza Horizon 5's smart ray tracing implementation of only ray tracing the player car provides a great visual experience with relatively tiny performance dips across the board. Every resolution is able to maintain near rash performance with its RT implementation, with no 1% lows even dipping below 60, for a good play experience at all resolutions. Though with FSR's poor showing, I would steer clear of it in this title. Next up we have the new action RPG for Spoken, running on its ultra settings which includes all ray tracing options turned on. On our 1440p ultra we are getting a 60 FPS average, only 15% below the RAS performance. And when we turn on FSR quality, we see performance jump up to 82 FPS, 15% faster than native raster. The RT 1% lows are quite tight delivering 49 FPS, all the FSR lows have a more average deviation coming in at 57 FPS. At 1600p ultra the base RT performance is coming in at 53 FPS, 16% behind the raster performance, but FSR is once again delivering better than raster performance at 75 FPS, to the tune of a 19% advantage. The RT 1% lows stay tight at 43 FPS, while the FSR 1% lows are again delivering a more average deviation with 55 FPS 1% lows. The 1440p Super Ultrawide sees a 45 FPS average for the RT performance, for a 13% drop from the raster performance, with the FSR results coming in at 65 FPS, 25% better than raster. The RT 1% lows are again tight at 36 FPS, and even the FSR 1% lows are better than average deviation at 50 FPS. And at 4K Ultrawide we see only 35 FPS for the average, a 15% dip from raster. And for the first time we see our FSR results fall below 60 Hz for a 55 FPS average, 16% better than raster average. 1% lows are still tight though quite low for our RT results at 30 FPS, and our FSR 1% lows dip below acceptable range at 43 FPS. Without FSR, only the 1440p Ultrawide provides a smooth gaming experience, but once FSR quality is implemented, we see all resolutions but 4K Ultrawide able to have a smooth gameplay experience in Forspoken. Next we are looking at Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Played at its ultra settings with both ray trace reflections and ray trace transparency reflections turned on. 
Here we see 1440p ultra-wide resolution delivering base RT performance of 74 FPS, a 57% dip from its raster performance average. When FSR quality is turned on, the XTX is now delivering 112 FPS, a 35% delta from raster. Both RT and FSR1 lows have worse than average variants, delivering 53 and 76 FPS respectively. At 1600p ultrawide, we still see smooth averages of 63 FPS for the RT results, 58% below the raster result. And when FSR is used, we see high refresh rates of 102 FPS, a 33% delta from raster average. For the 1% lows, we see our RT get 47 FPS with an average deviation, and our FSR results are 73 FPS with a below average frame deviation. Moving to 1440p Super Ultrawide, we see the XTX dip into acceptable frame rates, delivering 53 FPS for the RT average, a 60% lower frame rate than the raster, with FSR delivering 86 FPS for a 34% delta from raster. Now both 1% lows are delivering average frame deviation, with RT delivering 40 FPS and FSR staying in smooth territory at 63 FPS. Lastly, we have 4K Ultrawide, which sees the average frame rate drop into unacceptable territory at 40 FPS, 61% lower than the raster average. When FSR is engaged, we see an impressive jump up in performance, with FSR having the delta to raster to only 31%, with a 71 FPS average. For the 1% low, we see average frame deviation, with RT coming in at 30 FPS and FSR dropping below 60 for the first time to deliver an acceptable 1% low of 52 FPS. In Guardians of the Galaxy, we see a pretty massive drop off in performance when ray tracing is enabled, but because we're starting from such a high FPS, we still see two resolutions enjoyable with just RT performance, and all four are with FSR quality enabled. Next, we have one of the original ray tracing titles, Shadows of the Tomb Raider, played at its highest preset with ray trace shadows on Ultra. This game gives us a good gauge of the ray tracing progress we have made. At 1440p ultrawide, we see a nice high refresh rate for our RT results of 106 FPS, a 37% dip from the raster average. And because there is no FSR on this title, we are using XESS quality for our upscaling, delivering 120 FPS for the average, still 28% behind the raster performance. Both 1% lows are turning in an average frame deviation at 80 and 88 FPS for RT and XESS. The 1600p Altwide sees the XTX delivering 92 FPS for the RT average, for 37% lower performance than raster. With XESS, we see 106 FPS average, for another 28% performance delta from raster. For our 1% lows, we are getting 69 and 79 FPS from RT and XESS, another average deviation. Moving to 1440p Super Ultrawide, we see an 80 FPS RT performance, dropping the XTX into smooth refresh rates and maintaining a similar 38% performance drop from raster, with XESS coming in with a 96 FPS average for a 26% performance delta from the raster average. The 1% low stay in smooth gameplay range, coming in at 60 FPS for the RT result and 76 FPS for the XESS with XESS actually delivering better than an average 1% low deviation. Finally, at 4K Ultrawide, we see the resolution taking its toll, with the RT average falling into acceptable range at 58 FPS for another 38% delta from the average raster result. XESS is delivering 74 FPS, improving to only a 21% lower frame rate than the average, with RT 1% lows falling into unacceptable territory at 44 FPS but XESS 1% low stays smooth at 60 FPS, providing a very tight 1% low deviation from the average. In Tomb Raider, we see the 7900 XTX deliver very playable frame rates without any need for upscaling all the way through our super ultrawide resolution. But the 4K ultrawide makes using upscaling desirable, and even though we are using XESS, turning it on provides a very smooth gameplay experience for our 4K ultrawide. Our final game is the Ray Tracing Monster that is Cyberpunk 2077, played on its RT Ultra preset. Here we see our only game where the 7900 XTX struggles across the board. Even our 1440p Ultrawide sees crushingly low frame rates of 31 FPS for the RT average, 70% lower than the RAS performance average. 
And even though FSR quality delivers a very respectable gains over the RT results of 71%, the highest seen in any of our tests, it still can't hit 60, with it only delivering 53 FPS. Even with better than average 1% low deviation, we see our RT 1% lows fall into unplayable range at 24 FPS, and our FSR 1% lows coming up shy of acceptable at 42 FPS. Moving to 1600p ultrawide, we see even the RT average dip into unplayable range of 26 FPS, still a 70% drop from the Aster. Thanks to an impressive 77% performance gain from FSR, we managed to recover back into acceptable range, with the average getting 46 FPS and keeping its 1% low out of unplayable range at 37 FPS, with the RT results delivering a dismal 20 FPS. Our super ultrawide resolution dips below a cinematic frame rate, delivering only 22 FPS for the RT results, another 70% delta from the raster. And now, FSR average has dipped into unacceptable range at 40 FPS, despite providing an 82% performance boost. The 1% lows for RT are only 17 FPS, and FSR gets 32 FPS. At our final resolution of 4K ultrawide, we see a pitiful 15 FPS for our RT results a 74% drop from the raster. Despite a 93% performance improvement from FSR, it can't even reach 30 FPS, leaving it in unplayable range. And the 1% lows come in at 11 and 23 FPS for RT and FSR. The 7900 XTX takes a hammering from Cyberpunk 2077, with not even the 1440p ultrawide FSR results able to get 60 FPS average. If you want to achieve that, You'll need to drop FSR down to balance, and even then, only 1440p ultrawide achieves that 60 FPS average, while all other resolutions stay below it. Now, let's see what our 5 game average profile looks like. Here we see all of our resolutions delivering RT performance roughly 45% lower than raster, with our upscaling getting more effective as we go up in resolution. Here we see both the 1440p ultrawide and the 1600p ultrawide base RT performance getting over 60 FPS, with 72 and 64 FPS respectively, providing an average ray tracing performance that doesn't even need upscaling to be enjoyable. While both the 1440p super ultrawide and 4K ultrawide require upscaling to have a smooth experience, with our super ultrawide getting an acceptable 55 FPS average and our 4K ultrawide getting an unacceptable 44 FPS average. When we look at the 1% lows, we see both our 1440p and 1600p ultrawide RT results in acceptable territory at 56 and 55 FPS, respectively, and our higher resolutions landing in unacceptable territory, with the super ultrawide at 43 FPS and the 4K ultrawide at 36 FPS. Looking at what our upscaling tech's quality setting was able to deliver for us, we see our 1440p ultrawide delivering high refresh rates of 90 FPS and our other three resolutions delivering smooth refresh rates of 82 FPS for our 1600p ultrawide, 72 FPS for our 1440p super ultrawide, and 61 FPS for our 4K ultrawide. For a 31, 29, 29, and 21% delta from the raster average respectively. When we look at the 1% lows, we see both our 1440p and 1600p ultrawide staying in smooth territory, with 66 and 62 FPS with the 1440p Super Ultrawide and 4K Ultrawide dropping into acceptable range for their 1% lows at 57 and 48 FPS. Before we get into the conclusion, I just want to say, if you've enjoyed this Ultrawide content, please subscribe. It would really help this channel out, and the faster I can get monetized, the easier it will be for me to buy the next GPU to test on this channel. I've been working super hard to get these videos out as fast as I can while improving every single time, and I deeply appreciate any of the support that you've given me or this channel over the last few weeks. With that said, how does the RX 7900 XTX's ray tracing performance fare? Well, there's a great big cyberpunk shaped stain on what is an otherwise really good ray tracing experience for all resolutions up to our 1440p super ultrawide. At 1440p ultrawide, our XTX is able to hit 60 FPS or greater in all other games without even using FSR. Though, in cyberpunk, even with FSR quality on, you still fall short of 60. You need to turn down FSR to balance in order to achieve a 60 FPS average in Cyberpunk, which I feel is worth it rather than turning down the settings. 
If you get this card and want to play with all the ray tracing features on, you should be fine in most games that only use one or two ray tracing features like shadows or reflections, but games that are touting their amazing multitude of ray tracing features that have shadows, reflections, and global illumination, you may not be able to play with max settings while still hitting 60 FPS. This leaves the 7900 XTX in a bit of an odd spot. It has good ray tracing performance for most games right now, but with an uncertain future as the next gen graphics wars heat up. Its only saving grace is that all these games will need to run on consoles which have a similar GPU architecture, and hopefully these games will be optimized for it. Let's quickly touch on pricing. At its MSRP, the 7900 XTX's ray tracing performance is in line with its competition, maybe even a little bit better price to performance. But at its current retail price, that is thankfully much lower than it used to be even a couple of weeks ago, it falls a little bit behind in price to performance on the ray tracing side, but stays ahead in the raster side. It's a shame that we're still in a place with ray tracing that even if you spend $1,000 on a GPU, you can't just say, yeah, turn up the ray tracing, you'll be fine. If you've enjoyed this look at ray tracing performance, stay tuned for the ray tracing head to head between the 7900 XTX and the RTX 4080. Or you can check out the raster video of the 7900 XTX where we look at the performance in six additional games. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful to you. If I was able to help you make a purchasing decision, it would really help this channel out if you used one of our affiliate links in the description. I've been Scott, thank you and have a great day.